Shalom Aleichem Rabbi Sai. This is Rabbi Yehuda Levin, and the program is The Fear Kashas, heard each and every Wednesday evening at 8 o'clock sharp on 620 AM radio. The programs are also archived and can be heard and viewed if you have a heta for the internet on the fear, F E A R Kashas, K A S H E S dot com. I'm your host, Rabbi Yehuda Levin. This program is being taped approximately um, a day before uh, the program airs. This is being taped on the night of Zeus Hanukkah. Rabbi Yisai, uh, Zeus Hanukkah. Hanukkah is 89. Im HaKoylel, the word itself is another one, makes it 90, which is commensurate to the letter Tzadi, which represents Sadik Yesoid Olam. The Mida of Yosef, the Mida of Yesoi, the Mida of Kedusha Vatsnias, and uh, scrupulousness and adherence to uh, higher laws of Kedusha in the Yonim of intimacy. Yosef is 156, Yovan is 156, and thus Hanukkah represents the uh, struggle against Yovan and the Misyavnim in areas of licentiousness. And um, Yosef represents the Kedusha, and the Kedusha wins out. That's a major part of the victory of Hanukkah. Thus, on Zeus Hanukkah, the whole Hanukkah is the Midah of Yosef. But homiletically speaking, we can say Zeus Hanukkah, this is the nth degree of Hanukkah, on the eighth day, because the eighth day also represents Kedusha Sabris, because it's eight, so it's also more connected with Mila. It's the end all. It contains all the power. And therefore, on this day, it's uh, it's also, I just want to mention, that you see that Yosef is not only about Kedusha between opposite genders, men and women, but also very much Yosef is the anti asov asov has a molek, which is the same gender type of deviance and perversion. And we read in Rashi that the reason that the purchaser of Yosef, Potiphar, is called Saris Paro, the eunuch of Pharaoh, is because he purchased Yosef, who was very handsome, for same gender deviancy, and he immediately became impotent. And thus he sort of passed on the challenge to his wife to have opposite gender indecency. So Yosef is antithetical to both. He is the solution and the resolution to Kedusha in both areas. And thus, I want to spend a few minutes discussing uh, the terrible goings-on um, of a poster, a poster child for what's wrong about the approach of the insular parts of the insular Haredi community. We hear from the people who um, Rabbi Frankfurter disparages as being anti-Haredi, etc., etc., with a chip on their shoulder, and Rabbi Frankfurter says how if he learns of anything, um, he's willing to fight against it, he wants to protect every child. So um, Rabbi Frankfurter, who did an, uh, <clears throat> a beautiful puff piece with the front cover picture and an exclusive interview with the Square Rebbe, this happened after one of his minions, one of his, his Hoizbachrim, uh, was accused of firebombing somebody else. I'm not going to get into it, but obviously the Square Rebbe appeared on Ami magazine, this was, we're not foolish, and we understand there was a certain amount of damage control involved. It was not coincidental that this uh, happened approximately the same time. There were various goings-on in Square that are embarrassing. There's some guy who's very close to the Rebbe, his driver, his Mishores, his financial dealer who ran away to Israel, and he's accused also of terrible mysem in the areas of personal indecency, though nobody has had the guts to come forward to step forward and, and charge him on this. But uh, the latest situation is there's been an arrest of, uh, and we're asking Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Frankfurter if Ami Magazine will also do an interview with Skvera leadership or the Rebbe Shlita himself to ask him about this. And maybe Rabbi Frankfurter would, would do a journalistic uh, first and actually do something that really takes courage and is not just a puff piece, and that is to focus on what's going on in Skvera with the Herschel Taubenfeld case. A 16-year-old stepped forward and did something very courageous without any help from his own, from his own people, even his own family. Everybody seems to be muzzled and fearful, and then the shah still, which, as I say, is a poster boy for what's going on. And this young man stepped forward, went to the police, and complained that this uh, Herschel Taubenfeld, a 38-year-old person who's a rebbe in uh, the yeshiva for older Bachram, uh, he, he accused him of terrible acts of uh, indecency to him over a series of months. 
uh, it seems that this when this town felt heard that the police were after him, were looking for him, he initially went to Eretz Yisrael, and then he came back in, in the beginning or mid-December. And very interesting, in the Muncie connections, all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, Mr. Taubenfeld, uh, Rabbi Taubenfeld, uh, it announces that he has a, uh, that he has sm- obtained smicha from Rabbi Vosner, who is close to 100 years old in his 90s. Uh, you know, uh, very coincidentally, he gets smicha when he comes back from Israel, and then he does hear, uh, go over to the police, etc. This case is now going to be tried. Um, and guess where the venue is? The venue is the courthouse in Square. So in other words, it seems it's a possibility of Lich me boy, we have to be chayshed, that uh, that Square, of, of some part of Square, is pulling strings because obviously the people who will pack the courthouse will be Square Hasidim where the boy hasn't received a drop or an ounce of support from anyone. Nobody in Chicago, they have a bezdom for abuse there's some kind of an address to go to. I don't understand. I'm, 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 I'm foolish. I'm asking, how come the square rabbi doesn't call him this young man and question him closely to see if there's something, if there's something to this? I mean, uh, if there's something to this, how could it be that he's put back Taubenfeld to teach in a yeshiva for older boys and he's right next door in the building to 14-year-old boys? Whether or not he's going to molestrate to molest people or not, that's not the question here. The question is, if there's grounds that this person is a pervert, is a deviant, if there's a cheshash, I mean, uh, shouldn't Skver itself be doing something to clean their own house? Why should people go to Rabbanim if this is, if the, if this is going to be the attitude of what happens over here? Uh, this is of, of great, great concern, and, um, and we feel uh, that just on the surface, um, it's obvious this judge, who's going to be j- judging the case in the Skver community, you understand, um, is somebody who depends on Square for votes and stuff like that, so he's beholden to Square, and you could see where this possibly this this might be heading. Even the even the DA himself, even the DA himself, uh, even the DA himself, um, uh, we have to be choyshed, might be somewhat connected. Because Square is a powerful entity, just like they have uh, accusations against Charles Hines that he's been quiet, or he hasn't been doing enough, or he works hand in hand with Oil, and there've been covers up, cover ups of abusers. Not least of all, there have been abusers who've worked for Oil, Kia, Dua, and we're not finished with that either. So all I can say is, if it doesn't work out uh, that they change the venue, and there's going to be this intimidating factor. And it's like, uh, it's sort of like with the ACS that I spoke about, the child uh, agency in New York, where the uh, supervisor had already determined that she doesn't like the gentleman and that he was going to be out of the house, etc. If it's going to be one of these kinds of things, I think it's important if, if there's going to have to be a psak to go to the secular media, which is already reported on this, to make sure this doesn't occur in... Uh, in square, so uh, then we'll have to get some kind of a heta. When I say we, I mean people who are concerned will have to get some kind of a heta to see that this young man is protected. People should be encouraged to step forward. By the way, I have a bad memory, but I saw somewhere just recently that Rav Sternbach actually passed if somebody knows that his child was molested by somebody, even on Shabbos, he's allowed to do things uh, like make a phone call to the police. He should try to do it with a shiner, kalachiyad, whatever it is. But Rav Sternbach, who understands these things, views this with such severity that he even feels that you're allowed to, uh, that you're allowed to be, so to speak, mechal Shabbos. It's not chal Shabbos in such a case, because it's sakana. But this is a far different attitude than the attitude that, uh, that the shash still, nothing's happened, and let's squelch this like so many other scandals that's taking place in square. I feel it's a particularly appropriate uh, on, on Zeis Hanukkah to be discussing that we still have a uh, seeming Miss Yavnim kite, an anti yosef kite that's, a, uh, that's occurring. And if Rabbi Frankfurter and others like him want to stick their heads in the sand and say, oh, this is the anti Haredi thing, these are the blogosphere, etc., etc., then Rabbi Frankfurter, use your, uh, your, your journal, use your magazine, and let's say what you're going to do. Rabbi Isai, I just want to say, speaking about Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Frankfurter's magazine, he did something somewhat courageous. On uh, page 44 of the 11th of Tishrei, Sukkis edition of the Ami magazine, there's an interview with Rabbi Herschel Schechter, 
in which he speaks about the Bezin system. And I'm going to give you some quotes very quickly. The present system is terrible, he says. Then, then when he's asked, would you call them the problem in the Bezdin system a crisis? He says, it's worse than a crisis. They tell me there's a prominent Talmud Chochem who tells us, in Flatbush, who tells us Balabatim to go to secular court because they stand a better chance of Yosha in a Goyesha court than in a Din Torah. If you ask him, he'll deny it, but that's what he tells people. Unfortunately, I think that the comment about Yosha is true. Is the problem because of Toyanim? Says Rabbi Shefter, they jay a cup and obstruct the proceedings. They keep repeating the same things over and over. I asked Rabbi Belsky, and Rabbi Belsky said, if I wouldn't allow Toyanim, nobody will come to, to my Bezdin. They will go to a week of Bezdin. Um, then Rabbi uh, Shefter continues, and he says, it's terrible that the Yanim themselves are misusing the system. Someone told me that he was, the, he was divorcing his wife. He gave the get first, he didn't want to hold it up. So now every time there's a question about custody, his wife goes into court with impunity. Each time he goes to, for anything to court, the Bezin sends him a serif. They misuse the serif. They vilify him, and if there would be a serif against him, he would lose his job. He is a rabbi. So rabbi Shechter was shown he really understands the chesroinus with, uh, with the system here. They ask, uh, could, could there be a watchdog group with Rabbonim uh, to, to, to monitor the Bezdins, how they're behaving? So he answers, it's a suffix, a safe, a suffix, a kind of possible danger for the watchdog group. They're going to be killed. Question, meaning physically? Yes, these people are choshed on shvichas domen, murder. Then he says that we can't have a Bezin system that works as an embarrassment to Shanda and a Cherpa. So, uh, so here you have the situation, Rabbi Sai. Here you have uh, Rabbi Shechter, uh, who's speaking out very forcefully, and he understands uh, the, the, the problems with the Bezin. These are the points that I want to make. Number one, uh, if I would do this, if I would say these negative things, or some blogger would do it, then this would be considered like shaked stuff. If Ami Magazine does it with Rabbi Frankfurter interviewing, suddenly it becomes kosher. Why? Because it's an Ami Magazine? What's the difference? And why would Rabbi Shechter is allowed to say these things, but other people would not be allowed to say the same thing with Seichel or on other issues or on the same issue? In other words, when we talk about child abuse, when we talk about that good of being in, uh, hand in hand with the government and not doing enough against the schmutz, why is that not equally legitimate? Just because it's Ami Magazine, Rabbi Frankfurter, and Rabbi Shechter? There can't be a double standard. Uh, Rabbi Shechter has Uro, Kinderlach, that harass people. Four times Rabbi Shechter admitted to Dov Charnowitz that he had the wrong thing, that Uro was doing the wrong thing. And one time he personally admitted to me on the phone. Um, a former of leader of, of Uro was massacring many people, including me. He once called up the, the police on me in Manhattan and made up a bilbul. Uh, the Ura Charter is mamish anti Torah, anti Halacha. Where's Rabbi Shechter's sharpness in identifying Ura? When, uh, when there was a demonstration outside the house of a rabbi, uh, Rabbi Shechter came down with Heshi Billet, and when he was asked, Why? Why are you doing this? He said, Well, my people tell me, my Talmudim tell me I have no choice. Is that the standard, Rabbi Shechter? This is Rabbi Yehuda Levin, I guten Talmud.